Hello again, and thank you for choosing to watch another instalment from my YouTube channel, Benidorm and Beyond. Today I am taking you to the old town part of Benidorm, way past the walking street and out the other side to the Dove Park, then on to the harbour, or marina, on a sunny summer's day. We start with a stroll through the Dove Park, as we British call it, and of course we call it this because of the large amount of gorgeous white doves which gather around the fountains at the end of the gardens, feeding on seeds and anything else that people might throw to them. However, its real name is El Parque de Elche, or Elche Park in English. For those of you who don't know, Elche is a city in southeastern Spain, about 70 kilometers south of Benidorm, which is famous for the large basilica in its main city square, and also its sizable historical palm grove, which was planted way back in Roman times. At the end of the park that I began filming from, we can see the H10 Porto Poniente, which is a newly built luxury four-star superior hotel, with rooms overlooking the Dove Park and the Mediterranean. It opened last year in 2020 and has 174 rooms decorated in maritime themes and most of them with views to the sea. Further along we find a statue of the patron saint of Benidorm and she is called La Virgen del Suffragio or Virgin of the Suffrage. The legend of the Virgin tells that on March the 15th, 1740, the residents of Benidorm were surprised by the arrival on their beaches of a Yondro, which is a type of merchant sailing vessel who had sailed there without a crew. It was believed that perhaps the cause of the disappearance of the crew was the plague and this caused fear and panic. After arguing the matter with many heated discussions and consultations, the authorities decided to burn the ship in its entirety without removing anything. When the flames were extinguished, the children searched for nails and iron in the ash and found, intact and resplendent, an image of the Virgin Mary with the baby Jesus in her arms, which the ship had been carrying in its stern. In 1844, the statue was taken to the parish church and placed in the new chapel. In 1925, the Archbishop of Valencia gave it its current name and solemnly crowned the bust. Later that year, the parish priest, the city council and neighbours alike begged the Pope to declare the Virgin of Suffrage as the patroness saint of Benidorm, and in 1926, the pontifical rescript was received. The yearly festival to celebrate the Virgin are the celebrations that us Brits all know as the November Fiestas, and are held every year for five days from the second weekend in November until the following Wednesday. On the Thursday after, an unofficial Fiesta Day is held, which is known as the British Fancy Dress Day, and I'm sure many of you have attended and joined in the fun over the years. The colourful walkway area through the park was completely repaved in 2019, and this was to make it match the vivid tiling that already lined the whole of the Poniente Beach Promenade, or Paseo de Poniente. After an investment of €700,000, the work was completed at the very end of 2019. Additionally that year, a rainwater network was implemented to avoid accumulations of water when rainy, the ramps and stairs leading to the beach were reformed to enable better access for everyone, the street lights with LED technology and the gardening areas were renewed, preserving the trees, and Wi-Fi access points were installed. New recreational areas were also added for children of up to 14 years old and there really is a lovely family feeling in the area now as the boys and girls enjoy the climbing nets, slides, swings and replica boat in the sunshine. It's always a lovely place to stop and sit a while under the shade of the palms or maybe just watch the activities on the beach and the boats going back and forth to Peacock Island or further afield. At the furthest end of the park, as you approach the walking street, is a replica statue of the Dama de Elche, or Lady of Elche, after which the park is named. The Lady of Elche is an Iberian sculpture dating from around the 5th century BC. It was found by chance by a 14-year-old boy at the site of La Alcudia in the Elche region near Alicante at the end of the 19th century. The original bust is sculpted in porous limestone and is 56 centimetres high and weighs 68 kilos. When she was found, she had traces of red, blue and white paint decorating her lips, the mantilla and the mantle, indicating that the sculpture was probably multicoloured originally. 
Currently, it is kept in the National Archaeological Museum in Madrid and is valued at 15 million euros for insurance purposes. Overlooking the park, you can find many lovely bars and restaurants where you can enjoy a cold drink with a view or maybe a delicious full meal. These include the Jarro Lad British Bar, the fresh urban gastro bar serving healthy breakfasts and lunches, as well as the extremely popular Refuel Cafe Bar and Gusto restaurant, which I always hear people rave about. The main draw of the park, of course, is the beautiful fountains where the doves like to bathe and play and know that they have a superb chance of being fed from the many bags of seeds and pips that the little stall next to them sells. There is nothing locals and tourists alike enjoy more than hearing them coo and watching them flit about. And of course, there always seems to be a small child nearby, ready to run at them and give them a fright, causing them to take off en masse in alarm. Just watch your head when this happens or you know what might happen. The carved stone inside the water of the fountain says De Lucion Tambien Se Vive and this translated means of hope also one lives. This can roughly be explained as the saying hopes and dreams are what keep us going. For example, the Spanish say that life is not always about getting what you want but also about the dream of getting there. Heading down to the marina now, we find a group of people enjoying the outdoors and fresh air and an exercise class being held on the beach itself. Perfect for working up an appetite for later on. As we walk towards the port, there are several bars and restaurants where you can stop and make the most of the views and enjoy a drink or snack. As we continue down the Passage de Cologne, we also find the three-star Hotel Cologne, which was founded back in 1961 and fully renovated in 2002. At the end of this road, we find the ticket offers for the boat trips that are available from the port, and these include a trip over to Peacock Island, a sail to Calpe up the coast and back, or even further along to Alicante and Tabarca Island, which is a full day out. Now for a bit of history. On May the 25th, 1919, the first stone was laid to build Benidorm's port in an official ceremony. The stone to build the port was extracted from the Cala, although we're not exactly sure from where, but near the current Hotel Bali there was a quarry that remained in operation until the middle of the 20th century, so it is possible that this was the source. Other information suggests stone from nearby Tossal de la Cala could have been used, where Roman archaeological remains have been found. The port was opened nine years later, and in 1957 works were carried out to expand the breakwater. This created more ground space and new buildings arose such as the Fishermen's Association along with the Benidorm Yacht Club following in 1963. As you walk along the pier you can see the church and the El Castel area to your left along with the small but hugely popular Mal Pass Beach which is always full of sun lounges and parasols and people bobbing about in the clear warm waters. The current port consists of a 200 metre long dock, at the end of which starts a perpendicular dock where the island's ships dock. In the centre, on two pontoons, there is space for 99 moorings. Benidorm Marina, although shallow for large boats, has several piers and is where excursions to the island depart on a daily basis. It has an excellent sailing club that is located in a building with two floors and a large fleet of boats moored in its wetlands. In 1971, the port facilities were improved by including a docking pier at its end for ships visiting Benidorm Island, allowing the influx of more tourists to enjoy water sports activities and day trips. The views over to the Push Campana mountain and all the way along the Poniente beachfront to La Cala are simply breathtaking, and it seems so tranquil as the sailboats and ferries glide backwards and forwards, or a lone kayaker passes by. You really could sit here for hours. I hope you enjoyed taking this tour of the beautiful Dove Park and Benidorm Marina with me and I'm sure you'll agree it's a wonderful area to spend some time in and watch the world go by or maybe enjoy a boat trip or two. If you enjoyed this video I would ask that you please give it a thumbs up and like it and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. Also feel free to drop me a line in the comments section if there is something or somewhere you would particularly like me to include in the future and I'll see what I can do. For those of you who have only just found my channel Benidorm and Beyond, I enjoy not only videoing the bustling resort of Benidorm, but also the beautiful local area, 
including the nearby villages and towns, which can mostly all be reached by local transport at very reasonable prices. I'll see you out and about next time. Cheers!